this is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to look at King Moses. We're going to see the Mosaic Covenant. When Israel gets out from under Pharaoh, the Lord really begins to establish a kingdom on earth through Israel. Exodus 19, 5 through 6 says, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So that's what the Lord told him to say to the children of Israel. He said, And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. An unholy nation. Many men refer to this as the dispensation of the law because this is when Israel is given the law to follow. This is where you get into the books Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. All four of those books mostly, for the most part, cover the same 40 year period. And the dispensation of the law begins with the giving of the law in Exodus 20. All the books of the kings and prophets are operating under the law. This dispensation of the law doesn't end until John the Baptist. In Matthew eleven thirteen, it says, For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. So what you have in the Gospels, when John the Baptist shows up, you're seeing a transition from the Old Testament to the New Testament. A transition from the law to the New Testament way of things. The earthly ministry of Jesus seems to be a separate dispensation in and of itself. The law was added because of transgressions, according to Galatians 3.19. It was added because of Israel's disobedience. And men under this covenant were to keep the law and offer the prescribed sacrifice when they broke it. Keeping the law and offering sacrifices could never get them eternal salvation. It only gave them temporary forgiveness until they sinned again. They would be temporarily justified if they kept the law and offered the right sacrifice when they broke the law. This would get them to paradise in the heart of the earth when they died, but would never be enough to get them to heaven because it's not the blood of Jesus that was shed yet. But eternal justification... It only comes through Jesus Christ, so they had to wait on Jesus Christ to offer himself as the perfect sacrifice for sin. Then they could go to heaven. Man's responsibility under the law was to abide by the law and offer the prescribed sacrifice when they broke it. Looking back at a, a little in, in Exodus, God calls Israel out of Egypt as a nation. However, the devil, Lucifer, the former king of both kingdoms has other plans, and he raises up a new king over Egypt. In Exodus 1.8 it says, Now there arose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph. So the devil uses Pharaoh to try and destroy Israel. Pharaoh put them in hard bondage. So for about 400 years they are in Egypt, under the bondage of Egypt, a type of the world. And this is when the Lord raises up a deliverer named Moses. Uh, Moses, as you know, was too scared to do it at first when the Lord approaches him in the burning bush, but he ends up obeying God. And you see the battle with him and his brother versus Pharaoh's magicians. And every time Pharaoh uh, wouldn't let Israel go, the Lord would have Moses bring another plague on Egypt. And Pharaoh would just keep getting his heart harder and harder. And you can see how these plagues in the book of Exodus actually picture what would take place in the tribulation. And after all these plagues, Pharaoh still has a hard heart and won't let the people go. So the Lord has Moses to tell every family to go get a lamb. They were to kill the lamb and put the blood on the side posts of the door and on the top. And if they didn't do this, then their firstborn would be killed. This pictures the Lord Jesus Christ shedding his blood on the cross as the lamb of God. But they put the blood on the door... And the next day, Israel was leaving Egypt because all the Egyptians' firstborns were killed. Pharaoh let them go. Just like you, when you got the blood applied, the Lord took you out of this world. Egypt is a type of this world. When, they, when the blood was applied, Israel left Egypt, a type of the world. When you get the blood applied, the Lord took you out of this world, spiritually speaking. And in a sense, you were already sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
So Israel starts their journey to the promised land, and it's a rocky journey because of their disobedience. And the thing is, they took 40 years for an 11 days journey. In Deuteronomy 1, 1 through 3, it says, These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazeroth and Dizahab, there are eleven days' journey from Horah by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. And it came to pass in the fortieth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel, according unto all that the Lord had, commanded, had given him in commandment unto them. So you see, it said there are eleven days' journey, but it took them forty years. And many people will wander around in the wilderness their whole Christian life and never get to the promised land. The promised land for you isn't heaven because you already are promised that. The promised land for you is the victorious Christian life where you live like a Christian and pleasing in God's sight. Some people wander around as a Christian and never get to that promised land. The nation of Israel wasn't going around spreading the gospel as we do today. They were to take the kingdom and they were to take it by brutal military conquest. Instead of going into the promised land... Israel was afraid because of the giants. Israel's spies brought back an evil report, and it scared them to death. While the Jews were under bondage for 430 years, that remnant of giants was making their own little kingdom in the land. The devil set it up that way because he wanted to keep those Jews out of it. That was because the devil, the former king of both kingdoms, used to be over that land, and he wanted it. When the Jews finally get to go over into the promised land it was with joshua as their leader moses didn't get them in the promised land he pictures the old testament law that can't save you well joshua pictures jesus christ who can get you into the promised land the jews don't get to go into the promised land until all of the first generation died off all the ones who were 20 years old and upward had to die off before they could get in the land and that's why it took 40 years. Numbers 32, 9. For when they went up into the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time. And he swore, saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. So Israel would cross Jordan and the book of Joshua, and that second generation would possess the land. And they fought battles when they got in there and won battle after battle after battle. But Joshua is the one that got them into the promised land. He pictures the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Moses did not get them into the promised land, and he pictures the Old Testament law. You see, everything in the Old Testament, there's a picture of it, or it, everything in the Old Testament is a picture of something in the New Testament, everything. And then you get into the book of Judges. You get into the book of Judges, and Judges are men that God raised up to deliver Israel. Israel would keep getting backslid on God, and the Lord would raise up an enemy against them. Then Israel would cry to God, and he would send them a deliverer, because he's merciful. And some of the most well-known characters in the Bible were in the book of Judges. Men like Samson, Gideon, Jephthah, and Deborah. And in Genesis, you see the formulation of Israel with Abraham and his sons. In Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, you saw the calling out of Israel. Now in First and Second Samuel... First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, you will see the establishment of Israel. And then before you get through these books, you'll see the downfall of Israel. In First Samuel, you're going to see Samuel come into the picture. He is a priest judge. He is a great man of God. He is the last judge right before God gives Israel the king they, they want. God wanted to be king in their hearts, but they wanted a man for a king. God wanted to rule them in their hearts from heaven. He wanted a, th a theocracy where he ruled from heaven. So Israel goes against God and asks for a king, showing they didn't want God as king. They couldn't wait for God to give them a, a, 
a man as a king in their own time. So God gives them the king they want, King Saul. However, Saul isn't from the right tribe. In God's game of thrones, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Saul wasn't from Judah. David is from the line of Judah, just like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He will be the perfect king. God wants a king from Judah. So his choice was David. The people's choice was King Saul. The people wanted a human king. And God tells Samuel to give them Saul. Saul is who the people want. He isn't what he seemed to be, though. So God, later on, you'll see that God's choice is David. And eventually David's king. After that, you have Solomon, and from there on, it goes downhill. All the kings are compared to David because he was the best one. Rehoboam, Solomon's son, who's Solomon is king after David. Solomon is David's son. But in his son, Rehoboam, listens to his friends that are his age instead of the older men. And this ends up splitting the kingdom. So you have the northern kingdom, which is Israel. And you have the southern kingdom, which is Judah and Benjamin. And the northern kingdom is made up of, of the other ten tribes. But you have that split there, which started because of Rehoboam. The land is promised to the seed of Abraham unconditionally. And the nation of Israel as a nation can lose it because of sin. However, the seed of Abraham has an everlasting promise to get the land. And when you talk like this, people start calling you a Zionist and they slander you. They say you believe a Jew goes to heaven regardless if he believes the gospel. That's not true. A, good, a Jew goes to hell if he rejects Jesus Christ. But there is going to be a believing remnant of Jews who inherit the land promised to them. And it isn't the church that gets the land. We get New Jerusalem. It's the Jews that get the land. And there's going to be a believing remnant that get it. Because it was a, an everlasting promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then the next characters will be in, I'm going to really look at is King Saul and King David. And you're going to see some very interesting things about them. And also King Solomon and King Coniah. And then I think maybe do a season two of God's Game of Thrones where we look through at all the kings, which that'll be something way off in the future because I'm not even close to being done with this first season here. But this has been a quick look at God's Game of Thrones in regards to Moses, King David, and the like.